Heroku free tier is dead. For those who are unaware, Heroku is a service that used to have a free tier that was the gold standard for deploying your backend applications. As of this email, they have gone and done the world a massive disservice and disabled their free tier. So now you have to pay to deploy your backend projects. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, but I have more backend projects than a vineyard has grapes. So it's a big problem. And now that Heroku is dead, I guess we just have to give ourselves up to Google Cloud Platform or AWS. Wrong. There is but another way, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. What's good team? Welcome to another Small James Coding tutorial where today we're going to be talking about the best new place to host all of your backend personal projects. It's totally free, free tier product. And that product is Render. Absolutely phenomenal technology. And, you know, we're looking at migrating across from Heroku. Heroku used to have the ultimate free tier for hosting any of your backend services, like your servers or your databases or whatever that might be. You know, they had an amazing interface, infinitely easier than Azure, Google Cloud Platform or AWS. So it's a great system. However, now, you know, as much as it may have been absolutely brilliant, we can still create a new app. However, when we go to add an app, we have to add a payment method. Their free tier is gone and, you know, they have just absolutely shanked us in the back. So that's a real bummer. However, we can absolutely rebound from our relationship with Heroku for all of our backend hosting and deployment over to Render. Render, once again, absolutely phenomenal technology. They really do a brilliant job of maintaining the simplicity of deployment and hosting for your backend services when we compare them to an alternative like Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud Platform. You know, obviously, if you're looking to scale your backend to the moon or into, you know, a different universe, maybe AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform is the place to do that. However, if you're just looking to host a backend service, you just need some computational power and you just want to hit it with a few network requests, then Render is the place to be. So we can get started for free and we can just come over to their dashboard. You'll need to create an account. Once again, super seamless. I've obviously deployed two different servers here. Once again, they do like databases, job schedulers, APIs, backend runtimes, any of that kind of stuff. It's just as simple as Heroku, if not even easier to deploy your backend. All we have to do is click this new button. We have a whole lot of different services here. So as I mentioned, you can have a Postgres database, Redis, cron job schedulers background workers static files in this video we're going to be looking at the web service so we can just deploy a new web service they have amazing integration with different uh, code repositories so for example i use github i have my github integrated with render and now i can just connect a repository it will pull the code directly from the repository so if we come down here you know I, i've already done a node server I could do a node API. All we have to do is click connect and it will pull that repository over. We'll just give it a name, money, API, select the region. You don't typically have to worry about the region that much. The runtime is node, the build command is yarn. We don't have to worry about the root directory. And the, all we need to do is pass in the start command, which is typically npm run start. And that will just call node server.js. So we could actually be more explicit and just write that. Now here we can see all the different instance types. So obviously we're just going to be using this free tier, which is, you know, half a gig of RAM and 0.1 CPUs for $0 a month. Absolutely perfect for just a little backend project where you just need it to be live so that you can hit it with some requests from your front end, get some information back and keep all of your information or your code secure inside of a server. And then if you are looking to upgrade or like maybe your application is getting some you know, more traffic, then you can easily transition into these bigger kits. They're still very inexpensive. And that is an excellent, like temporary place to be while perhaps you do choose to migrate over to AWS, uh, Azure or Google Cloud Platform. Anyway, we're just gonna go ahead with the free tier. We can click create the web service. 
it takes us through to a build page. Build is you know pretty straightforward. We have all of this information down the sides, critical ones being like logs, if you have any build failures or you wanna log outputs from your server. Another common one is the environment variables. So this is where you would get your, or access your environment variables to keep them all secure. We've got scaling, we've got settings, we've got all sorts of stuff, you know, very easy product to navigate, very easy service to, you know, work around and deploy your backend. And so just like that, I can use this URL right here. And once it's fully deployed, I can send requests to this URL, uh, you know, whatever path or route that may be from my front end and render will service that for us and send us back a response. So we've seen that deployment is absolutely seamless. We can see if we come over to their documentation, they have documentation on how to deploy basically anything. You know, it could be a node server, it could be a browser automation with Puppeteer and Node, just about anything. They have all types of backend languages. You can have Dockerized applications and you can really see just how simple everything is. We can have uh, webhooks for different deployment states and stuff like that. Heaps of absolutely brilliant information. You can see that they have different pricings. And if we really break that down, once again, you can see the different costs for the different services, uh, web service, background workers, so on and so forth. They also have a really great blog section. You know, here, this is very pertinent to the video. They've got an article that talks about how easy it is to move from Heroku to Render. And I concur to that statement. It has been absolutely seamless. It took me about a total of 10 minutes and all of my live backing code that was turned off by Heroku at the end of their free tier has now been migrated over to render. And we are now in a very deep and intimate and loving relationship. Anyway, that's pretty much the whole video. Make sure you check out render if you're looking to deploy your backend code for free. Once again, brilliant service. We can move on from Heroku. Heroku is dead. We can leave that in the past and we can embrace the new. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and sub and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.